everybody, and welcome back to the Chiluminati Podcast, episode 220. As always, I am one of your hosts, Mike Martin, joined by the, oh baby, the Jason Friedberg and Aaron Seltzer of LA. That's us. Jesse and Alex. That's, you know what? I feel like a seltzer. I feel like that's who I am. That's who you are. That's the two of you. Jason, Aaron, what did you say? Why'd you look so confused, Jesse? The way you started this might have been the most broadcastery. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to an all new episode. <laughs> I, I'm evolving. I'm evolving as a podcaster. That milk chocolate. I guess. <laughs> a coffee or tea brand deal is in our near future. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take either one. Uh, yeah, welcome. Welcome to the show. It's just the three of us. After two weeks of guests, uh, one of which Jesse was absent for. Probably to his own. Sanity. Can we reveal? Did we, did, we re, did we already talk about this on the air? What? Can we reveal what we want, we, we want Jesse I to do? I don't know. That, I oh, think yeah, yeah, yeah we did because just... it was on Reddit. People were talking about it on Reddit and on, yeah. on our Discord. Yeah. Because yeah. that's gonna all do, I, I, I want to do. I want to do a watch along, a listen along, and leave comments like as Jesse I go reacts. for Patreon. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. man, dude. Oh, man. I can't wait to listen to that. <laughs> I am not looking forward to it. I can't wait to, to hear it. you. Like, Santel pops off well before I do. It's wild. It's he like, is. As a person who deals with him frequently, and I used to deal with lovingly. He FaceTimed me the other day. I love this man so much already. He- <laughs> yeah, I love him to death. He is all in on conspiracy theories. And I just learned, this is totally true. I went out to dinner with an old friend uh, who I used to work with way back in the day. And we're sitting around having a conversation. He's like, did you hear about this alien thing? I was like, uh, yeah, a little bit. And he's like, let <laughs> me tell you. And he went all in not just like he's convinced it he started saying things about the pyramids oh, and no. i was like dude i can't i must surround and attract people who are in the space and are just all in because i don't know what it is about me personally where i'm like i had to sit there dude. So, the pyramids so, is like a line for me too. let's put that fucking out there okay humans could have easily made the pyramids he brought up the question uh Hey, those fires in Hawaii, man, oh, like, oh, how oh, come there were a few homes and, and that were still fine? Or, like, why did the boats catch fire? And I literally had to sit there and explain, like, okay, well, the homes that were fine, they had metal roofs. And you see, the winds were so high that the winds blew the embers onto other houses, and those houses burnt down. But if you had a metal roof, you were fine because the metal didn't burn. Same with boats. The wind blew the embers onto the boats, and the boats got fire. And I had to explain this. And he's like, wow. That's unfortunate. That checks out. That makes a lot of sense. And I was yeah. like, where Science, were you bro. before? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, you should have been like, how do you think it happened before that? Did you learn this from the Meverse kid? <laughs> I, that, but it's one of those things where I absolutely understand if you're in that space, if you're operating in there and and you enjoy the conspiracy. A lot of people like it because it's fun, right? It's fun to feel like you're a part of a conspiracy. Yeah, you can enjoy a conspiracy for it being fun and not believe in it. Sure. Well, I don't know his level of belief. He was just throwing out questions. And I was like, yo, oh, I actually oh. have answers for you. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, was yeah. like, Wow. <laughs> Hey, listen, no, you know what? Props to him for being like taking the convinced and yeah. in, 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 in by being like, that's cool. Now I know. As opposed well, to yeah, being he's like, he's not a crazy person. He just enjoys convenient. a good conspiracy. Like, yeah. I, you know, and I you know me, and you know me, like I brought, I knew what I was doing, bringing Mathis and Santel together. It's like yeah, yeah, yeah. old Marty McFly touching <laughs> young Marty McFly in the past and setting off a chain reaction. <laughs> I know. I know what I did. It was, Mathis it was, starts disappearing. It was yeah. a beautiful chemical reaction. Yeah. And I think sometimes, you know. And, and I think this is very in line with the energy that I bring to this to this panel. That sometimes it's good to just sort of like taste the flavor of what's going on without taste the rainbow. One, I mean, yeah. w- without worrying the- about facts and you know, like you right. gotta just take it. It's like we're no, no, reading no. it. Jesse, don't yeah. laugh at that because no, because it's not like without so worrying like, about facts. No, no, no at the very it, top of that episode, Je- Alex came forward. He's like, in order to make to have these conversations, we have to take like the geneticist post. And other posts like that, just as, you know, pretend they're real, pretend they're just facts. Because and I'm not saying they are. Yeah, yeah I'm not you saying they are for the conversation, for the fun conversation of it all. We have to ignore all these facts and figures and information and statistics, <laughs> science, throw it out the window. Just so you can understand where the thinking is. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like you can't if you need a window in. And I brought my own conspiracy theory. You know what I mean? I brought my own energy. You to also brought a ton of way more government documents than I thought you would have brought. So I appreciate that. Yeah, I know, right? Like, <laughs> it's not crazy to 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 assume that there's something happening. But I think if you only just do your own Speaking research, of. I think you might miss out on the sort of internet meme sort of like the 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 zeitgeist of it all. 
If you know, you know what I you mean. You make a good point. You know, before we let you shill to everybody. Yeah. Hey, over on Spotify, you can put up polls and stuff for people. And on that episode, I put up a poll with three options. Let's see what they say. Uh, the options were, I said, what do you believe? Yes, they're here. Something's going on. Shrug emoji or it's all just human error. You know, pretty wide gaps between them. There's way more sure. nuanced answers. But here's what it broke and broke down to. Only eight. The lowest number is eighteen point five percent of people believe they are here a hundred percent. Like that is uh, the smallest. That's number. our listenership. That does say a lot That's about our, our audience. Our yeah. listenership. Yeah. The yeah. next. Uh, the next one is twenty three point five percent believe everything is human error, and in the middle, but at the majority, at fifty eight percent flat, something is going on. Team Alex. Which, Team Alex, which is the right. I think that is the right answer. You know, in terms of sanity. <laughs> um, but you can make Jesse believe anything you want, as far as I'm aware. That's right. And if I put a poll in the show notes for this show asking whether or not I should continue shilling for our Patreon at patreon.com slash pod, I know for sure that the answer would be 100% yes, because everyone out there knows that Shlumanati Pod on Patreon is where you need to go if you like to be here and listen to us do this. And in exchange for just a little support for this show that already comes out for free... We are nice enough to offer a plethora of things in return for you. Wonderful things. Not just, not just a tote, not just one membership tote as some crowdfunding programs do. No, but ad free episodes, mini sods with every episode, access to our brand new show, Rotten Popcorn, which you are actually going to record several episodes. Speaking of, speaking of, yeah, interruption. Do you see, uh, I think it's either the 24th or the 27th, a new four-part Netflix UFO series is coming Dude. out. A documentary series. Okay. That's, that's a rotten popcorn if I've ever heard one. That's going to be next month. That's going to be October's, yeah, baby. That's, that's Spielberg, be right? I do not Somebody know. Do, I just saw I think, a I think, little yeah, blurb today. He was working on one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and I'm so... I'm so ready, but go over there, check that out, get Mel's art. Mel's art rules. I look, I never look better online than I do <laughs> ripping off some bat's head or whatever the fuck I'm doing next in these fucking crazy metal concert posters. So go check them out. I, you know, it's all great. It's all great. And, and, uh, that, that's why I know the poll results would be unequivocally in favor of these wonderful shills. At patreon.com slash pod, if you have $10,000 that you want to wipe your butt with and throw in the trash, please send it our way instead. And Jesse will say these words. My name is Jesse Cox. Aliens are real and they're here already. That's what he'll say. No, uh, you know what? I'll believe whatever conspiracy wiping you want. Your, wiping your ass with the money might still be a better use of it, but I would still Don't appreciate say that. It. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, Don't also, value this episode's coming out when the announcement has gone out. We have a live show coming up, everybody. The tickets what? are officially on sale. Bam, 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 bam. Bam, bam, bam. October 15th at the Terragram that Ballroom. Is, that is a weekend date. That's that a Sunday a night. Day. It's a Sunday. Yeah. Uh, you'll see the announcement everywhere. The, again, the tickets uh, for the show will be uh, in the link area, description area below. I guess it's like that. And Spotify, wherever you're on your podcasting, you'll see a link somewhere. Go grab tickets. They usually sell out pretty quick. And uh, it'd be awesome to see you there. Make a little uh, weekend uh, trip to L.A. If you want the hype, if you want the hype tip two days before we do a show, my favorite band, my favorite band, Islands, is playing the Terragram Ballroom. Also, I will definitely be there. You might be up there on the marquee with them. Yeah, that's if that happens. That's my dreams. You've you've made it. You've everybody here has given Alex his dreams. Look, I'm not going to I'm not I don't want to put that vibe out into the universe. But if you want to have a great weekend. (laughs) Don't stay in downtown L.A. Drive there, but get tickets to both shows and have a grand weekend on Friday and on Sunday. Are you going to do what you always do and pop up a food ref- a re- a referral of co- kind of, of co- menu? Of, co- of, of course I am. <laughs> That'll be over at Patreon.com yeah. as well. You Shilling can count on it. All right. Shillin's out in the way, boys. This is like what I like to consider the Chiluminati palate cleanser kind of episode. It's time for another episode of Cryptids. It's been a little while since we've done some cryptids. I'm so ready for this. I want to tell you, doing the research the past couple weeks has been heavy duty because of those yeah. wrestlers that, that were killing that's people. Rough. Yeah, yeah, that's rough stuff. It's not so I'm, I'm happy to just talk about some, uh, some chill beasts. Yeah, I've got a list of 10 cryptids as always. And this time coming from one of my uh, my homelands, I guess you would call it. It's the cryptids of Ireland. 
We're okay. going to Ireland finally because we've done some smaller out of the way places the past few times, and I've, I haven't done Ireland, which is surprising. I'm like fifty percent Irish. But like, how close are you to your Irish heritage? Like, do you know about like Irish I don't drink, stuff? So you know, uh, no, I'm not Damn. very close to my. I, I know it's Whoa. crazy. It's crazy. Whoa, I don't drink. That was, that was like I don't drink or love potatoes. I do love <laughs> Damn, potatoes. Bro. Though. I love potatoes. Potatoes are are one of my favorite foods. Okay, but do you know, do you actually know an Irish? person in your life is there like is there anybody like from the old country uh no my girl the last person from ireland died when i was like 10 i think okay so but still that's pretty close yeah my great grandmother who was directly from italy literally died last year like oh, she's wow. been yeah crazy yeah uh pretty close Chow connections that stuff yeah, yeah how about you guys are you irish at all I'm not. Oh, yeah. One hundo. Jesse, yeah. I mean. Uh, that's a lie. Not 100. Okay. Like yeah. 50. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You I am not. I'm Irish than I do, though. So you look zero percent Irish. I am. Zero percent. Yeah. Cork there. County, Ireland is where my people are from. I'm Ooh. the Balkan powder keg mixed with <laughs> the Cajun <laughs> spice bomb. <laughs> <laughs> and it made the chillest dude of them all. Yeah. I smoke a lot of weed, you guys. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, we're going to start uh, these. I tried to find there's a ton of them over there. And obviously the big ones like Leprechaun and whatnot. But we're not going to look at those. I chose 10 of the weirdest, most interesting one, though. There are a few that are familiar to, I imagine, a lot of people out here. But we're going to start and you're going to have to figure out how you're going to rate these. But this is known as the Bougain. B-U-G-G-A-N-E. Bougain. Bougain. Okay, feel free to look it up, but I'll read along as we go. Uh, this is a Manx legend, and it's a, a bulky subterranean creature with features akin to those of a mole. It's said to be uh, in bodily appearance, similar to a hairy version of a Scandinavian troll uh, with glowing eyes and massive tusks. Bougains, as magical creatures, they cannot cross running water or tread on hallowed ground. Occasionally, fairies may use bougains as a sort of hired muscle. They're like, <laughs> like the 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 mooks of the of the fairy world, I guess. Having them uh, use the, they end up using them to punish people who have offended the fairies. Like henchmen, so fairies get offended. They're like, go get a bougain, and the bougain goes and roughs them up. Okay, like bulk and skull, or uh, no, bebop and rocksteady. Yeah. yeah. Also, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I guess they're both, both kind of like, sound true. Yeah. They're kind of thuggy. Yeah. There's not a lot of detail known as to like where exactly this all originated. Obviously, you're looking at 16th century, I believe. Um, but one famous example of a bougain from a local story is with the bougain of St. Trinian's Church. This is one of my this was when I read this, it made me laugh. So when this is kind of gives you an idea of what the bougain are all about. When St. Trinian's Church was being constructed, supposedly a bougain decided that it was if it was fully built, its bells would disturb its sleep, which I fully I'm on the side of the bougain so far. Yeah. yeah. So as as the church finished being built for three nights in a row, the bougain would go over to the church, climb under, I guess, climb underneath it or on top of it. And throw the roof off of the church. Just the whole, the whole roof, roof. The whole roof would just come out and it would just throw the roof for three there's nights in a row. There's some kind of joke there about tearing the roof off. I don't know what it is. I don't have it, but you, you can you can do the work here. Yeah, no, we're all there. It's like a it's like an illumination computer animated movie trailer joke. And you know, you guys can get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it's hilarious. Uh, this thing is considered kind of a, maleg- a malevolent goblin or malevolent. A spirit that's malevolent. Uh, malevolent. A malevolent, malevolent goblin or spirit that is said to haunt uh, uh, the Isle of Man. And it's said to be about it can uh, it could be as small as the size of a child with like huge strength. Ripping the top off a church. How does it even reach? That Dude, makes it's it even a fairy better. Creature. That makes it's it even a fairy creature. It's a squat like... little like Jesse creature because it also has red hair. It has red hair. It. And, oh, I love it. And a long tail. And it's ve- it, yeah, just it's like me. Be, yeah, Bougain. The, Bougain. the Bougain. It's said to be very strong and can cause a lot of damage. That's kind of like what's known about Bougain it. Bougain sounds like literally like someone from Louisiana's last name. The, the earliest known mention of the Bougain that I could find anyway was in the 16th century, but it's likely that the creature was probably around way longer. The name Bougain is thought to come from the Manx word Bougani, B-U-G-G-A-N-E-E, so an extra E on there, which simply uh, translates to little devil. So it's like yeah. a little fucking shit stirrer, basically. Love. I love this. Dude. I can see people calling their kid in the 16th century. You little fucking Bougaini. You little like, little, yeah. Thank you to Ghostbed for sponsoring today's episode. And do you want to hear more about Ghostbed? Because you're gonna Cause sit down. I love it. 
I genuinely love my ghost bed pillow. I am a hot sleeper. I sweat profusely. If you want to know what a sweaty mat this looks like, maybe that's why the aliens haven't come to get me. Because when they swing down at night and they peer through my window, they're like, that man is sticky looking. Just ignore him. Well, aliens, I have a ghost bed pillow now, so please come back and try again. That stuff is so cool. I never have to flip my pillow at night anymore. Anywhere on the pillow is consistently cool with the way they have their design set up and the type of material they use. It is just my favorite pillow without a question. I... I, I if I ever lose it, I'm getting another one. And if you're feeling like a lack of sleep is starting to become an unsolved mystery for yourself, then I think you should check out Ghost Bed. Whether for the pillow or the beds themselves, which are amazing, it might be time to just make sure you're getting the best sleep possible. If you toss and turn at night like I do, maybe it's time for a new mattress. The folks over at GhostBed have got you covered with high quality supportive mattresses that wick excess heat away from your body, helping you sleep through the night. Each mattress comes with free shipping and a 101 night sleep trial, so you can buy with confidence. Plus, most orders ship within 24 hours, so you don't have to wait long to get a better night of sleep. Head to ghostbed.com slash chill right now to speak with a sleep expert who will help you find your perfect mattress, or you could just take a quick quiz to discover your ideal bed. You don't have to talk to anybody. For a limited time, you can use code chill over at ghostbed.com slash chill to get 40% off your purchase site-wide. That's right. All you got to do is go to ghostbed.com slash chill and use code chill, and that's 40% off the entire website. Thank you so much to Ghostbed for sponsoring today's episode. Uh, Another story tells of a Bougain that lived in a cave near a village, and the Bougain would often come out at night just to terrorize the villagers. It would come over and knock over their houses, steal their food, and even just attack people at random. (laughs) Just like, it's like, as you do. Uh, Yeah, exactly. Uh, One day, a group of villagers decided to get rid of the Bougain, so they built a fire in the cave and waited for the creature to come out. When the Bougain saw the fire, it was so scared that it ran away and never came back. It's like a Baby Yoda type scenario. Very, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, more like the Nibbler. More like the Nibbler. The Nibbler. So fire is its like weakness. Then, yeah, I, ge- like, I guess it can rip roofs off. So There's- hold on. So hold on. Wait, this is going back to Alex. So if the roof, if the roof, the roof was on fire, yeah. he couldn't have <laughs> affected it in any way. No, he'd just have to watch that motherfucker burn. Right, right, right. We wouldn't have any water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I hate you so fucking much. (laughs) Uh, There's another fun story of the Bougain that lived in a forest, and he would often just waylay travelers and steal their belongings and run off. Uh, One day, a traveler was walking through the forest when he was attacked by the Bougain, but the traveler fought back and managed to kill it. Okay. Can you kill fey folk? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a scary creature. You just have to Bougain use iron can or be something? defeated. Yeah. I don't know. Well, with the Bougain, basically, if you ever encounter a Bougain, the best thing to do is build a fire and say what else? A Lord's Prayer. Oh, OK. There okay. you go. Uh, these are the, these are said to be the only things that can scare away a Bougain. I feel like Bougains like hear somebody say the Lord's Prayer and then they like look at each other and they laugh and then they like <laughs> rip their church roof off (laughs) yeah exactly um the the other little bits and abilities it can also change size and shape it can be whoa whoa whoa. you can't just blow right over that that's the craziest ability you can have i mean it's It's changed size and shape yeah that that ability is put right next to it's also very noisy (sighs) yeah you know those extra traits no to the point where like it screams can be heard from miles around oh shit okay yeah, like not All like right. dude. This small. thing sucks. Like if I ran into one of these, <laughs> that would fuck up my shit extremely. Yeah. I don't. Yeah, so that's that's the Bougain. Uh, and and with it being a popular figure in Manx folklore, it's been featured in many stories and songs and poems over the many centuries. And the creature is also a popular tourist attraction. There are many places on the Isle of Man where it's said to live. Kind of think like Jersey Devil ish. Yeah, or the Mothman vibes. Yeah, yeah. So there you go. There's your first little Ireland uh, cryptid, the Bougain. That's Where more Manx figure- than Irish, right? Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's one of those ones that kind of like tr- moved to Ireland. Uh, uh-huh. But regardless, uh, that's your first one. That's our, our little dip. Okay, what, so uh, how do you rate it? How do you so rate how about this, this thing? And before we start talking about fucking beer and potatoes again and break the hearts of every Irish person listening even further. Yeah, uh, yeah. Let's say it's a me. I'm I, Irish. Let's see. No, <laughs> let's, no. let's see. <laughs> let's see if we can say on a scale of one to five, 
how easy would it be to write like a how how good of a candidate is the Bougain to write like a heart wrenching poem about in the tradition of all the wonderful Irish literature mm. and poetry that there is sure, out there? Right, right, right. Yeah. Uh, on a one to what? Five. Oh, one to five. Well, obviously, um. He can't find a good Catholic girl, so because he's scared of, you know, prayer, prayer and, and fire, fire yeah. wouldn't, you know, redheads out of the question. There's a lot of fire. He's so, a redhead. I would say, a redhead. Yeah. But like when he sees, do you think he has a mirror, bro? No. Uh, that's so true. when he sees like others of his own kind, even. So I would say Bougain is a five on the sadness scale because like this guy's life is misery. See, but I, I would actually go the opposite direction. I was going to put him at like a two because this dude lives to just be a troll. Like he just screams and destroys things. He's more he's more silly. Like we he's love a poem. You said a sad he's, poem. He's a mook. Not fun drinking song. That's true. Hold on but now. That's exactly what I'm saying. Like he's more silly. And I feel like there's room for poetry that's like kind of light and, and fun. But you don't remember those poems as much as the ones about the truly tragic dude, things. Green eggs and ham I remember very well. Well, gain all tear your telling. roof off. There's a whole thing. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say two. Also, I'm gonna go with the two. All right, all right. I agree with you. All right. Next up on the cryptid list is the far darig, F A R R space D A R I G. Is that how it's pronounced? Far darig. Uh, you know that's how I'm pronouncing it. So great. I'm sure we'll get. It. Just Guys, send us how it's really pronounced. Did you know that we have a subreddit where you can correct us on all the mistakes <laughs> that we make at r slash yeah. Illuminati Pod? It's out there. Just don't report my account for suicide. Let I us won't know. have to ban you. Hi, all of Ireland. Let us know how angry I'm you are. You. Yeah. At Mathis Games. Yeah. On- no, no, no. <laughs> I have Irish. I have Irish mafia ties in Boston. I have family in the Th- mafia. Don't. I don't know that I like that. <laughs> so I got you, fam. I got you, fam. Yeah, that's what they say out in Boston. Yeah. Mm-hmm, that's okay, what they so say. the Fardari is a small, hairy creature that's said to live in the woods of Ireland. Me. It's said to be very shy and only appear to people who are lost or alone. Me. The Fardari is also said to kind of just be harmless, but it can be a little mischievous. Me. The earliest known mention uh, of the Fardari, as far, again, all according to my own research, is somewhere in the 17th century. Uh, again, it's much like the one before it, though, probably been around for a long time. And they, it's believed that the Fardari is actually the Irish word, for, uh, it comes from the Irish word fear darach, which means man of the oak. Oh, so he's like uh, some sort of fey creature. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure these are all going to yeah, be. These, yeah. All these. Oh, most of these are going to be kind of fey in origin. You'll see. Um, okay. They said they mostly live in hollow trees and is often uh, seen sitting on branches or just playing in the leaves. Very cute. It's said uh, to be very good at climbing trees and can often be seen swinging from branch to branch, kind of like a monkey. It'll. It will come out only when it's very dark due to its shyness, and it will often hide behind trees and bushes. If it sees a human, it usually runs away. However, the far darig can also be a little mischievous. It's, a, it's said that they like to play tricks on people, such as knocking over their hats or pulling on their hair. It's also said to like to steal food. And it's also been known to eat the contents of picnic baskets. This is just a, this is just a Pokemon or Yogi, like a Yogi, the bear. Yogi the Bear version of the Bougain. It's like a passive Bougain. This is like if is the Bougain... Is picnic basket? Yeah, if the Bougain like, didn't do cocaine or something. Hey, Bougain, yeah. is that a picnic basket? Hey, <laughs> boo-boo. Uh, <laughs> um, but that seems to be the extent of its mischievousness. It doesn't really actively harm anybody. It just kind of like teases them and spooks them maybe a little bit. Uh, it's never known to have hurt anyone, at least in stories that I could have that I found. And it's a relatively popular figure within Irish folklore. It's been featured in many stories, songs, poems, much like the Bougain. And the creature is also another populous tourist attraction, as there are many places in Ireland where this thing supposedly lives. What do you do when you like go? Like, would you? How do you legend? I don't know. When I get, I, I'm saying like, you know, there are cryptid hunters out there, you know, and there's a lot of shows like Lost Legends and like all these other things that go to these places and probably make them touristy for people like us if we didn't have a show about it. Right. And we just wanted to go and, you know, go see it for ourselves. Uh, yeah, the thing is usually the size of a child, long hair, dark hair, beard, um, extremely hairy, much like the Bougain. These guys are so similar. These guys are like, one is like a go-getter and one is like a uh, like procrastinator. Yeah. Uh, the other thing, like if you ever come across one, the theory is like if you ever see one before it, it gets to toy with you, literally just like pay attention to it. 
it hates to be noticed. Like, make it known that you see it, and it'll usually run off. This is me, Just dude. Just, like, look at yeah. it. This is me. I don't want to see anyone. Make loud noises, and it usually runs away from loud noises as well. Yeah, I don't want anything to happen <laughs> at all. At Ever. All. Yeah. You know, this one for me in the poem scale is more of like a four. This one, like, the ch- like only after learning about the Bougain am I like, this guy's tragic. Because it's like, <laughs> imagine if you're like the dude who's like on your parents' couch, like a stoner. You like had some things going for you, but you kind of let him go by. But your brother is like really successful and he's out there and he's like into crypto really deep and he like he's talking like chet hanks white boy summer bullshit sure he's yeah, out yeah. there you know like that's the bougain and this guy's the couch guy right and so for me that's a little bit more tragic i'm gonna bump him up to a three uh you know this guy Fargarn's a three for me i don't know he seems kind of like a silly goof to me uh he has less weaknesses as well so i'm gonna say a two yeah, the fire, the fire weakness is big, but, you know, I don't know. It doesn't stop Martian Manhunter that much. <laughs> okay, on to the next one. Uh, <laughs> That's where I right. lost you guys on the Martian Manhunter? I just don't know DC that. It has man. the word Martian in it, man. I guess that's true. He's, he's a manhunter. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next up on the list. Oh, God. All right. So I'm gonna, I, I wrote down how to pronounce this thing because I don't understand how to pronounce it otherwise. I'm going to copy paste it for you boys just so you see the word I'm looking at. There you go. Uh, that's pronounced Garaji Bui. The Garaji Bui. Garaji Bui. Uh, this thing is, unlike the past two, not so small. He's a giant in Irish folklore. It's nice. said to be a benevolent giant who lives in the Wicklow Mountains. And he's often depicted as being very tall and strong with golden hair and a beard. The early could is a Nordic. They didn't know they were dealing with a Nordic at the time, but it's, you a think Nordic it's alien in space. Yeah, it's an alien. Right. Well, obviously. I mean, that's the logical thing here. Right. Obviously, uh, the earliest known mention of the Gar, uh, the Gariji buoy is somewhere in the 17th century. Uh, again, we don't know where exactly it truly started, uh, but these words, they thought to come from Garidik, meaning giant and buoy, meaning yellow or golden. So basically its name translates to like golden giant or yellow giant. There are okay. lots of stories about this guy. In some stories, he's a helpful giant who helps travelers and farmers. But in other stories, he's a, myst- a mischievous giant who plays tricks on people. However, he's always portrayed as being uh, he's almost always portrayed between the two of them, though, as usually being kind and gentle. He's got like a little mischievous side. Um, one of the most famous stories about this giant is the story of how he helped a group of travelers who were lost in the Wicklow Mountains. The travelers were so grateful to the giant for helping them that they built a stone cairn in his honor uh, out in the Wicklow Mountains. The uh, Gary Bowie is a popular figure still amongst many. There's no tourist attractions other than the Wicklow Mountains that I'm aware of. And I'm not sure it's really touristy for him particularly. Um, But he's said to be so tall he can be seen from miles around. Obviously very strong and can lift boulders with ease. He's also a skilled hunter, and he often brings food back to whatever village he's uh, either protecting or staying at. And he's a kind and generous giant, always helping those who usually need help and those who are in need. Again, like getting lost in the mountains and stuff. Okay. And there, uh, there's, I got, yeah, there's a bit, that's about it for the, uh, the Garabui giant. That is Zack Snyder's Aquaman. Wait, <laughs> wait, what? What? Can you can you elaborate for me? Have you seen the Snyder Cut? God no. This man literally just said, "I don't know DC," and you were like, "You know what that's like?" I'm just saying, Zack Snyder's Aquaman. He's like, I would he, never watch a four and a half hour movie. Uh, he just that helps. Is probably he just, minimally he like, different. He just like li- they made him a sweater. I don't know. They sing they to made him. him a sweater. I don't know. They, he he jumps what? in. Is this, what? He, no, all right, all right. So in the movie Aquaman, uh. The way well, it wasn't Aquaman. No, no it's it in the was, Snyder Cut. It's, it was it's in the Snyder Cut. Yeah, yeah it's in Justice right. League. He's yeah, like yeah, in Justice League. He has a whole village that loves his ass and like kind of sings. Yeah, um, he's kind of like Batman living, throws him into the wall or whatever. It's like it, it's, it's, it is yeah. that. Yes, yeah, he's yeah. live. He's living like the easy life, kind of like amongst the people. He's almost like what Lex Luthor would be mad at Superman about, like making the people that work with him, like less strong. You know what I mean? Like, because he's so strong and he can just do all the work that they need to learn how to do. He kind of makes them into kind of like, he like domesticates them a little bit. Domesticated. See, because he's a golden haired giant. I just, I thought Thor was a closer. 
I, but Thor is like the size of a man. Like the th- like Thor. Sure. Thor is like a the giant compared to me. Like a weedy little <laughs> scrubbing bubbin. But I, when you say giant, when you say giant, I'm th- I'm thinking like a big, huge, almost like deity like creature that like from black and white when you used to send your like monster to town. Right. You know what I'm talking about? That's the vibe here. That's how sure. I feel. That's how I'm seeing it. I don't. I don't know. I feel like he's a. In terms of like poem, he's a one because people love him. Is he close? No, no sad, heart wrenching poem you could write about him. I feel like because he kind of just seems like he loves life. He loves helping people. People love him. They made a statue, Cairn, in his honor. Yeah, I gotta be honest. This is a one. Unless here's the thing, though. It's a one unless you could sell me on a five poem about how he's so happy, but really inside, he's depressed. That would be the saddest poem of all. Or consider this. Fi- I, I'm with you guys. One, because he's just too, it's too presh. It's like, he's like Santa all the time. But for <laughs> number one question, is he naked? No. Okay, cool. Good. Next. Why does he feel the need to cover up? I don't know. He, maybe he's just modest. Mm. Maybe he's, he's like got us. those 17th century Irish Catholic morals. Yeah. yeah I got, yeah, I got yeah, pants on right now it. for sure. Definitely. Definitely. God, I hope so. The thing that's going to make it into a five is if, like, the Gaston type character comes and, like, shoots him in the heart and kills it. Oh, don't yeah. say it. Not you know like what I mean? This. And then the whole town's, like, sad, and they're, like, singing a song about their dead friend. Then it's a five. Sad. That's sad. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm saying at a one. Yeah. I think but I, if that's off the table, if that's off the table, one. I didn't see anything about that when I did my research. So I'm going to go with he's a one. Okay, yeah. Okay. I mean, that's fair. All right. This next one I can pronounce. Uh, this one's, this one I can see being a little bit more tragic than the one prior. This one is the Amadan Moor. This is a figure in Irish and Scottish Gaelic folklore. Uh, and it's said to be a, f- another giant, but unlike our dear friend from prior, this one is known to be a fool and a, often the butt of many jokes. He's also known as the great fool or the fool of the mounds. Yeah. You know, he's just a giant who's a fucking idiot. Apparently. The earliest known mention of the modern Moor is around the 17th century. Uh, this is this is like his name translates meaning a modern fool, Moor, great. So literally, great fool. His name is means he's just, just a the, big idiot, the big fucking idiot. Yeah, like just wearing I mean, your name is big moron. I already feel bad for him. You ever, yeah, you, yeah. You know that thing about how you treat people stupid and you make them stupid. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. yeah. I don't yeah. know. That's how, that, you know, maybe that's what happened. Just maybe think about here. think about that when you name your your mythical beasts. <laughs> in uh in the stories he's often uh, sometimes in some stories rather he's uh, portrayed as a harmless fool who's very easily tricked but there are some stories where he's also a mischievous fool who plays tricks on people but he's uh he's always again regardless of his mischievousness they even those stories are treated as like this fucking idiot this moron of a giant he barely got away he barely succeeded in what he was trying to do i got his powers listed out you ready he's uh very tall and strong that's it. Those are his powers. Like Thor. He's tall and strong and fooled by people. That's his other power. Yeah, like Marvel Thor. This, this, yeah, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Kinda, because he's like, yeah, because Thor is like, in, in the MCU anyway, he's a big moron. He's yeah. just a stupid fool. He's a, what do you call him? Uh, uh, he didn't start that way, poor a guy. A golden retriever? Well, Thor 1 was rough. Thor 2 is pretty rough. Thor one, Thor two was double rough. Yeah, but double rough. Neither of those things are this guy. This guy, I mean, he's he's in in the lightest sense he's Thor, but in the in another yeah. sense, he just seems to be like a cosmic joke on himself. Yeah, I mean, in, in even deeper, like a little bit of a deeper cut. Um, he's like, uh, he's in several uh, Irish folk narratives. He's sometimes the leader. Or, uh, he's a sometime leader of the fairy host in these narratives or poems. Um, the fool of the fairy mounds if, of most pl- or, or pl- palaces rather is uh, what he's mostly known for. But there are times where he is like leading fairies in some of the poems. But leading, um, he's greatly the reason he's greatly feared is because he he may administer the fairy stroke upon you. Oh uh, what? The, what no! Does that mean? Let, me, let me give you the fairy stroke real quick. The fact that you said administer the fairy he went, administer the, he went is like, like he hit it with like. The fairy stroke. He administer the fairy stroke. Yeah, with that, like, whoa. Yeah. Even maybe it is a pleasurable thing. Either no matter what, it causes uh, paralysis, crippling uh, of the person, or sometimes death. What does he stroke you with? 
Uh, he's most active in June. And I don't know what he strokes you. He get, no, he gives you the fairy stroke. You have a stroke, but it's you called get like a, fairy a stroke, stroke, basically. And if that stroke causes like paralysis, a crippling of some sort, you just okay. die. All right. It's because okay. this guy, Amadin, gave you the fairy stroke. That's what it was. <laughs> fairy stroke. I know. I'm gonna, I love saying it like that. Um, yeah. Like he, the Harlem they, they, Shake. A little, you know. He, checks out. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So just a little bit extra there. Just a little bit more to give you uh, a taste of what his mischievousness, his mischievousness can be like. It's pretty rough. So on a one to five, is he more tragic? Because most stories, he's just a fool. But or is he less tragic? Because in the times that he's not. He's given people fairy strokes. If I if I'm writing a story about someone getting a fairy stro- fairy stroke, does that count? Or no, because then that's a tragic uh, that's a tragic story about the person getting the fairy stroke, not about the person the giant giving the fairy stroke. This this guy just seems. If you type in fairy stroke on like Pornhub, do you think something's going to come up? I'm I'm positive. I wouldn't do that. I'm, I would do that. I would just just see what happens. No, I'm all right. <laughs> Curious. Is Alex checking? Uh, no, I just I'm <laughs> okay. We got a rate, and we got a rate. I'm having trouble putting. I'm, try, I'm having over. trouble trying to like to like. I w- I'm going to put him at a three. I can't even almost like grok what he's, this dude's vibe is. You know what I mean? Like he's kind no. of a lovable fool, but he also leads fairies, and he can give you a stroke if at his will. He's no Titania, that's for he sure. He seems da- he seems more dangerous and scary. Like I would be afraid to write a poem about him. I mean, that's fair. Yeah, I don't know, like. A three, I guess. I, I feel, eh. I feel, I feel non-committal. I feel, I'm puzzled by That's this where I sat. I yeah. said three this as well. Solid I feel two. Three. This is a solid two. I can see that though. Like I can, I can see a, a two being appropriate for this guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's a weird one, man. He's a very, very strange uh, little giant. It's like a weird, like, I don't know the giant. I wish they were, we saw some giants walking around an island right now. It would make the place look way cooler. I, do, I, what? I think, I think that there are like, some sightings of some sort of like tall man, like some tall gray man, some tall man. Well, we did see, remember that TikTok thing that popped up, that guy who was filming back when the three things crashed and he saw that like giant human. And then he kind of like vanished off TikTok, and it was all really weird. Yeah. Was that Ireland? No, I don't think so. That was weird actually. Yeah. But it was just, I'm just saying similar idea, a similar idea. All I right. Think giants are out there. The next, the next cryptid. Some might know this one. A puka. I've heard this. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I've P-O-O-K-A, heard this name. P-O-O-K-A, also spelled P-U with an, like an as- like a, uh, accent mark, C-A. P-U. This thing, the puka, is a shape-shifting trickster, uh, a shape-shifting trickster spirit, my, my apologies, of Celtic folklore that usually takes the form of some sort of domestic animal or a human with telltale animal features like large ears, extra little furry, or maybe even a tail they try to hide. It is said to be the descendant of the Tuatha de Nan, oof, Tuatha de Danann, who are the ancient gods and goddesses of Ireland. Oh, that's kind of cool. So they're like yeah, just the like Tuatha a little Tuatha de Danann, like a little leftover fart goblin. Yeah, yeah, of yeah. The old like, gods. Yeah, he's like, of the forest. Yeah, yeah. He's kind of like uh, yeah, a little fart goblin of leftover god powers. Uh, I love the that. Puka, I don't like that. The puka is well known for its cunning and wile, and is often said to enjoy playing tricks on humans. It can be benevolent or malevolent, depending on its mood. It can be kind of a moody little cryptid. And in some stories, it's just a helpful spirit that guards travelers or helps farmers with their work on the farm. Dude, imagine if a puka just walked up onto the farm, grabbed a hose, like, I'm going to help you out today, and just starts fucking helping you. I would never fucking tell anyone. And I would just ride this gravy train all the way to the bank. <laughs> you might even be curious if you're going insane or not. Uh, no. I love that, though. But in other stories where it's mischievous creature that just like plays tricks on people, uh, sometimes it'll like steal things off the farm, for instance. Other times it might steal your food. Again, just little mischievous tricks. Very, you're going to notice in a lot of these these uh, fairies and folklore of Ireland, a lot of stealing food themes. Uh, a lot of food kind of disappearing, and I, you know, I feel like there's a historical reason as to why that would be the it, case. It makes me frustrated uh, when someone takes food off of my plate. In yeah, general, I mean, I would imagine it's frustrating as well if someone like little puka showed up and took your potatoes without asking. Like when a monkey comes and he takes my cigarette or whatever and like runs away. 
You know, like that's what I'm just saying, like, you know, in real life, like I can think of like the, the closest you can imagine to like a fairy coming and taking your stuff is like maybe a monkey coming and taking your sandwich or a seagull coming and taking your burger out of your hands when you're about to eat it. And I feel like I don't know, like I've never once worried about monkeys taking anything of mine. But well, I mean, Not once were you ever in a place that's like silly with monkeys? I mean, yeah, a few times. But you, that's, never- you know, that's my own story. But that's what I'm saying. Like, I can see it. I, you know, I'm just saying, like, little little bastards that take your food, that's, like, the first thing I would think of as, like, what a little goblin boy would do. Like, as many goblin boys as there are, they're all taking little food. Little bastards that take well, your food. If you're curious what a yeah. puka looks like, uh, there are a lot of different drawings of them, but the most common one that kind of, like, in terms of what it looks like is, uh, let me give you a picture real quick, and Dean can edit out the awkward silence. Because this is, it's almost like a jackalope in a weird way. Um... I love the one on Wikipedia. Have you seen that one? Oh, the one with just like the little, like, like a little. It says, it says, like, in his own proper character, yes, however, yes. Puka has a sufficiently grotesque elfish aspect, and he just fucking looks like this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I wasn't going to use that picture because that tells you nothing. <laughs> this looks like shit. This looks like his name is, his, his name is Dip Dip. His name, it looks like, <laughs> his, it looks like his name is like. <laughs> to describe this, to describe this scenario, it looks like Imagine a shadow puppet. A, it looks like a, a shadow a, puppet. Yeah, it looks like a one of those uh, paper shadow puppets that you would do a performance with in like 13th century Japan. Yeah. It has no features. <laughs> it it except it has eyes and a mouth that goes. Yeah, it's just a little. It doesn't even have arms. It, it, I'm not sure it has two legs. It's viewed in. I don't know either. It's viewed in profile. It looks like an L with a fucking drinky he's, bird head on. He's it. grotesquely elfish. It looks like it was drawn by fucking John Lennon. I don't even know what the look fuck's the, going no, on. Look at the link I sent you for a more artistic interpretation of these things. Uh, oh shit. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this thing looks awesome. This thing looks like it could like fly the Millennium Falcon with Han Solo. He really does. <laughs> I love. Yeah, it's yeah a, that looks awesome. Yeah, he's a much cooler looking dude. Like if a, if a rabbit and a bat man, like a bat bat demon, like a gargoyle and a rabbit mixed together, maybe that's what the yeah. this this one is that you sent. Yeah. Uh, well, the thing about it is, like I said earlier, it can shape shift. Uh, some of the forms it's known to take are horse, donkey, goat, dog, cat, hare, and like I said earlier, sometimes even a human. And it's often said to have fiery manes and a mane of tangled hair when it takes animal shapes. A rabbit mixed with a lemur with dragonfly wings. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's a weird looking thing. Yeah. It's said to live in the mountains, forests, and moors of Ireland and is most active at night, often seen lurking on the edges of roads and fields. The puka is another popular figure among Irish folklore, mentioned in some famous Irish writers' works like W.B. Yeats and James Joyce. They've had uh, little bits about them. The history of the puka is not super well documented, uh, but it is believed to have originated in Celt- uh, Celtic mythology. And much like the other ones, 17th century somewhere is like where the first stories started popping up that we have records of. Um there's a few stories well known about the puka. There's the puka of Naknashiga. This story tells of a puka who haunts the hills of Naknashiga in County Wicklow. The puka is said to have the ability to change its shape and is often appears as a horse or a goat in this particular story and is said to be a, a mischievous one that plays tricks on people. Then there's the puka of Sleeve Blue Mountains. This story tells of a puka who lives in these mountains in the county Lao Loi Lao All this sounds completely Ooh, accurate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. I can't say these names. We're gonna bro, issue a real apology to the entire. I country. apologize <laughs> to the Irish people, even though I am fifty percent your blood. I apologize greatly. The puka is said to be a benevolent creature on this story that helps the travelers and helps protect the lands. Again, it can help you with your farmland if it fucking feels like it. Um, And sometimes is seen in poems as a guardian spirit of the mountains. The last one I have is the puka of Beren. And this story tells of a puka who lives in Beren, the county in in County Clare. And the puka is said to have shapeshifter, uh, said to be a shapeshifter that can take on the form of a human here and ends up going to town just to play tricks on people. It goes into town to just fuck around with them and then leaves. Yeah. It's also known to take in, in a few stories in the area, a shape of a horse and like take the place of somebody else's horse. It just, and just like, like doesn't obey you. them. Yeah. It literally just fucks it's like with you. Mr. Mix you spit like type stuff. Yeah, like like Rumpelstiltskin vibes, right? Like, yeah, yeah he's yeah. like, oh, this is going to be a fun little fuck up. 
<laughs> I'm just going to do this shitty thing for no reason because it's for my jollies. There's a, yeah, the puka, there's like a, a, few, a bunch of different like stories, but there's one that's like about a, bo- a guy who his name was Sean went into a, in a, into a bar and there was a puka already there smiling the and waiting for him. The puka bar. Yes. Oh my God. If that, if there's not a bar in Ireland called the puka bar and it's like you a puka bar fucking up and it's like, yeah, that'd be, that'd be hilarious. The puka bar and, and then cosplaying like- pukas come out and give you some, some stuff to smoke. Yeah. Um, but basically, like he show, he walks into the bar. The Puka's waiting for him, smiling. He's like, "Hi, Sean. I've been waiting for you." And Sean's very confused. Poor Sean. He says he knows he's a good man and he wants to help him. And when he asks how, the Puka says he's going to give him anything he wants: money, power, fame, all that stuff. But Sean knew the Puka was a trickster and simply said, "I don't want anything from you." And with that, the Puka simply said, "You're making a mistake," and disappeared. Hmm. And that's the story. That's really just. Uh, Did Sean only, like, die? Full... No, nope, he lives on. He goes He's happy. Fine. He lives on. The Puka just left him. I, you around, know what? Around. That would he fuck left him with me. an ominous "I'm always watching you" line. But like that would fuck with you me. Know. I like to be that real. Would fuck like, with me too. If I saw it, but like in a good way or a bad. Way. Like sometimes, not but, a good way. Well, according to that the story, Sean my head. never saw the Puka ever again. Um, that's all. That's like walking through a spider web for the rest of your life. That's that's <laughs> yeah. I gotta, you're I never going to so. be sure it's not there. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, on the tragic poem scale, the puka is an asshole. It seems like uh, occasionally a good guy. I would rate him but high. Like, I would rate him high. Him high why? Because he's like the the fart of the gods. Yeah, that part I think, and the way that he interacts with our lives compared to how gods interacted with our lives. Like, there's something <laughs> there's something tragic about that, right? Like, there's something like uh, the march of modern life. You know, like I don't know. There's something about the the times change. The times yep. change. I know that song. Yeah. Thank you to Canva for sponsoring today's episode. And you've heard me talk about Canva before. Even though we're a small team and we're an audio entertainment medium, there's a whole lot of visual stuff you have to worry about when it comes to taking care of the podcast, getting the episode out, making sure you have a sweet logo, making sure maybe an episode on YouTube has a unique thumbnail or a live show's coming up and you want to get a nice poster together. Or maybe, maybe you're going to throw like a pitch deck together for a TV show. Any one of those things you can use Canva for. That's the whole point. You know, I've got to cut myself off before I start rambling too much. And our little team over here at Chaluminati is very slowly growing. We've got the three hosts. We've got ourselves an editor. We've got ourselves a researcher. And soon we're going to have somebody taking care of like all communication for us. Not yet. We're not there yet. But when we get there, you bet your bottom, 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 butt. You're going to get them. We're going to we're going to get them over at Canva. Canva for Teams is a design platform that makes it super easy for anyone to create stunning content in any format from social media posts to videos, presentations, websites. The endless templates and premium fonts, photos, graphics and videos add personality and edge to all of my team's content with features designed for brand consistency. Canva for Teams makes it super easy to maintain your aesthetic and add logos, fonts and colors to anything you create. Canva for Team has a video editor as well that's mega easy to use with tons of filters, animations, and transitions that'll just bring your group's content to life. Canva for Teams enables you to take your presentations to the next level with professionally designed presentation templates. Plus, their remote control feature means you can virtually connect and navigate slides from any device. If you got a small team or a big team that you need to collaborate with, collaborate with Canva for Teams. Right now, you can get a free 45-day extended trial when you go to canva.me slash chill. That's C-A-N-V-A dot M-E slash chill for a free 45-day extended trial. That's it. Canva dot M-E slash chill. Thank you to Canva for sponsoring today's episode. So what's the scale? What are you ranking? I'm, I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to put about a four. Okay. Four? I, you know, that's higher than I would go. I think I would stick at a three with this guy. Not because I'm indecisive, but... He's kind of an asshole, even if he is the farts of a god left over. Yeah, uh, I think because of that, it's a five. Wow. Okay. I think the whole thing, it, it's a very, if you think about it, dude's just sad. Like he, he he's taking it out in, in the wrong yeah, way. Yeah, he's taking like he his, could have been a contender. his anger is because he's taking out his like really bad life on people. <laughs> he's just taking out his life. All right. All right. So we got a pretty tragic guy. I can see it. I can, I can see it. All right, this next one I put, picked specifically for you, Jesse. Um, oh this one here is known as the Li, uh, Lenan Shi. I'm gonna. I want you to look up the. I'm gonna send you a link. 
Oh, this sounds familiar. Okay. The Lenand? It sure sounds like Lan Shea. I, I literally have a pronunciation around things that I don't know, so I'm pronouncing it as I'm supposed to. Yeah, no, to. I mean, this, she checks out. This is, this is, oh, I know why, because this is from Shin Megami Tensei. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Yeah. Well, she's also known as the Banshee, with capital B, like the Banshee, or the Fairy Queen. And she's a female fairy in Irish folklore, said to be a beautiful woman who seduces young men and artists. This is exactly Jesse, giving them yeah, great inspiration on. and creativity. However, it comes at a cost. That cost is she also slowly drains your life force, causing you to waste away and die young. Oh, so marriage. <laughs> Good Rodney God. danger over here. Oh, whoa, 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 this feels whoa. like this feels like a <laughs> almost like a, a metaphor for for young creative people who are like died or in early on in their lives for numbers. Yeah, it's of like reasons. A, a muse, some sort of yeah, like yeah, uh, yeah. this muse takes the. It's like the Irish version of the like sea captain's wife kind of yeah feeling. That, she's a stone cold sure. hottie in every one of these illustrations. Oh, absolutely, so. dude. She, I would absolutely ruin my life for her. And a pretty good uh, like mid game like. Summon or whatever you want to call it, demon Shimagami Tensei Five. May oh yeah yeah yeah. Fair. If you play yeah, Shimagami yeah. Tensei Five, it's pretty good, pretty fun. <laughs> Just saying, if you like hardcore Japanese RPGs, give it a shot. A uh, breakdown of her name is simply Gaelic words meaning uh, Lenan means sweetheart or lover, and Seed uh, or she rather means fairy. So very very straightforward, like most of the names here. Uh, and like I said, she's also known as the Banshee which is a word of Irish origin that means woman of the fairy mound. So not Banshee in the way we now know it, but, but more of its though, original meaning, meaning a lady of the fairy mound. Again, fairy queen. Yeah. That's why I think that's why they capitalize the B and the Banshee when referring to uh, the Lenan she. This one's she like, said, a, this yeah. one's like a five for sure. Like I, you know, I, 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 oh, I'm going to let yeah. you, I'm going to say you could go ahead and finish, but this is like a fucking Sandman <laughs> story already. Yeah. yeah. I, I, yeah, she's a fiver. Um, the uh, she's a she- 10 for me <laughs> oh, <laughs> hey, hey, hey. come down over here <laughs> well the Lenan she is said to live in the other world a parallel, a parallel realm that exists alongside our own and she is often seen as a muse inspiring artists and musicians with her beauty and grace however the danger of their life force being drained away when she does so is the trade off for such things there are many stories around her. Uh, one story tells of a young poet that was seduced by the Lenan Shi. She gave him great inspiration, and he wrote some of his best poetry while under her spell. However, she also drained his life force, and this poor artist died very young. Another story tells of a young musician who was also seduced and, very similar to the artist, gave him some of the greatest musical skills they had ever known and became famous uh, very quickly due to his, his, his talent gifted to him by the Lenan Shi, but much like the one before it, died extremely young due to the spell that he was under. This, like, legit uh, might be a Sandman, actually, now that I think about it. it oh, I haven't read Sandman, so I don't know. Yeah, like, I, I don't, yeah it's, like, really in, that, it's really in that vibe. Yeah. She's kind of like a complex character, way more complex than most of the other ones we've covered today, uh, in that she's beautiful but dangerous, re- representing kind of like a dark side to creativity. She's much like more of a of, like th- thematically complex creature. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, so, you know, some look at it as like a reminder that inspiration can come at a price, or at least those who seek it must be careful not to like lose themselves in the process. Yeah. There's a yeah, reason like, writers have trouble, you know, in life. Yeah, yeah. Um, again, like the rest, uh, with her particularly, we don't really know where her origin is. Uh, she's thought to have originated within Celtic mythology, but we don't really have a year again. Rick, like most things, when the Rick, written records began in the 16th and 17th century, that's where we have the first references to her. But before then, we don't really fucking know. Um, yeah. So th- there's a, I'm curious where you would throw her on the scale. I know Alex said five ten, but yeah. Uh, I think I said it at five five. as well. She's easily uh, like one of those, like just you can so you can do so much with her character. It was made to write a heart wrenching poem about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me give you a full story about her, and we'll move on. Yeah. One day, Miriam was walking in the woods when she came across a beautiful woman. The woman, dressed in green, had long flowing hair, and Merriman was immediately smitten with her, and they began to talk. The woman told Miriman that she was uh, eventually told her rather that she was Lenan Shi and that she would give this uh, him great inspiration for his poetry. 
Miramin, Miramin agreed to meet with her again, and they began a very secret relationship. So he would just quietly go out into the woods and meet with her. Lenan Shi gave Merriman great inspiration for his poetry as she promised, and he wrote some of his best works during this time. But he noticed that he began to waste away, slowly but surely. Lenan Shi was draining his life force, whether he she knew it or not, and he knew that he would not have long to live. Miramin did eventually die young, but his poetry lived on. His most famous work, The Midnight Court, is a satirical poem about the Irish legal system. The poem is still read and studied today and is a testament to the power of the Lenan Shi. Uh, she's also known as AOC of the fairies, uh, is a race of supernatural beings in Irish mythology and folklore. She just kind of, her, her influence and tentacles spread Queen of the fairies, far yeah. and wide. Uh, yeah, I like her a lot. She's one of my favorite ones. Really neat. Like a bajillion, yeah. Yeah, there's a bajillion stories and little details about her you could easily go, like, lose yourself in. Very romantic, yeah. Yeah, very romantic. Uh, so I had a couple other stories about her, but, you know, we don't, we don't really need to worry about that. Let's skip. I had, like, three stories about her, because there's just, like, so many. So this one is another one I think a lot of people will recognize. This uh, is known as, the, these, rather, are known as the Fomorians. That, sounds like, some, that, that sounds like some Star Trek shit. The Formorians. Uh, I'm going to just like... It that sounds like... like beyond the ice wall kind of shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. These are supposedly a supernatural race in Irish mythology who are often portrayed as hostile and monstrous beings. Originally, they were said to come from under the sea or the earth, and later they were portrayed as sea raiders and giants. They're enemies of Ireland's first settlers and opponents to the Tuatha de Danann, the other supernatural that we, we talked about in a previous uh, uh Cryptid. The Tuatha de Danann defeat the Fomorians in the Battle of Mag Turid. This has been likened to, to other Indo European myths of a war between gods and giants, such as the Aesir and Veneer in Nor- Norse mythology and the Olympians and Titans in Greek mythology. This is like Ireland's version of that. Interesting. Yeah. And it's really cool because you play, yeah. you know, God of War lately, Aesir and Veneer. You know, that's like the core of the same vibes, yeah. The Ragnarok right now. Uh, the earliest known mention of the Fomorians is actually way back in the 10th century. However, it's likely that, much like everything else, it went back even further than that. They're likely just stories passed by word that eventually made it to paper. They were, there are many stories of them, and in some stories, they're a race of giants who are feared by the people of Ireland. But in others, they're a race of, like I said, sea creatures who attack ships and coastal settlements, raiding them for food and people. However, they are always portrayed as hostile and monstrous. There is no two sides to this cryptid. Unlike literally every other one that we've talked about today, these are pure evil. Um, and again, the story of battle of, uh, of the battle of Mog, I imagine is how you say it. In this story, the Fomorians are led by Baylor, a giant with a single evil Baylor? eye. Baylor? Baylor. That sounds familiar The Tuatha too. de Danann are led by Lug, Lug, L-U-G-H, a skilled warrior and magician, and the battle is long and bloody, but in the end, the Tuatha de Danann are victorious. Baylor is killed, and the Fomorians defeated. This is crazy. I didn't. I didn't really know anything about this. Baylor is the uh, thing from Game of Thrones. Very Games of Thronesy in a way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a little bit about them: tall and strong, uh, with some being described as having one eye or one arm. They're often depicted as being ugly. They are said to be skilled in magic and warfare and are often associated with the sea and the underworld. To me, these things came about likely because of like losing ships at sea. Maybe water travel is becoming more common. Sure. Um, this, there's a story of a fisherman who encountered a Fomorian. Uh, there was a time the fisherman named Fionn Mac Comhale, C-U-M-H-A-I-L-L. Uh, he was a skilled fisherman and was known for his strength and courage. And one day, when Fionn was fishing off the coast of Ireland, he saw a large creature in the water. The creature was tall and had only a single eye. Fionn knew that this must be a Fomorian. So the Fomorian saw Fionn and swam towards him. Fionn was scared, but he knew that he had to fight. He drew his sword, prepared to face this thing, and the Fomorian attacked him. But Fionn was too quick for the Fomorian. He dodged his attacks and struck him with his sword, and the Fomorian fell to the ground dead. Fionn had defeated the Fomorian, but knew that this was not the end. There were many more Fomorians out there, and they would be looking for revenge on his lost people. 
Uh, so, you know, like it's a, it's an interesting story. I don't know. Like it just be careful of it. It's just um, badass, is what it is. It's yeah. Like, they're very, just like a badass creature. This is another five. Um, this could be like an epic poem. Really? You think yeah. these are a five? This could be like the this Iliad. This could be a heart wrenching epic. I thought. Yeah. Like this could be all the romance tales happening at once. Like this could be the Iliad. Mm, this okay. could be, you know what I mean? This could be a big epic. Okay. I can see it. I can see it. I know we've done seven. I have a couple more, but we may cut it short because we're already at an hour. Um, Jesse, what about you? Where are you rating this thing? You know, this one is... There's something there. There's something clearly there, but sure. you know what? I'm going to say middle of the road, three. Three? Okay. I'm going to go two. I don't know if I really see a sad epic about this I'm thing. pure five. I'm pure five on I know this. you are. You're it's like there. Achilles You're way out there. getting his little the- heel bopped. The thing about like the sadness scale is it's rough because the best sadness is one where it's like, you know, going back to Happy Giant. Mm-hmm. He doesn't seem like he'd be the, the sad one, but you could write a really sad tale about how he's happy on the outside and sadly, right. and that'd be the worst one of all. It'd be so sad. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> I'm kind of here. A, I'm kind of here you're for it. Five. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're there. All right. It's this romantic. next one is called the Kalya, even though it's spelt. Kale leech. That's how it's spelled. In case you want to look it up. Kale leech. Oh, this yeah. This okay. is a divine yeah, hag or ancestor figure in Gaelic mythology associated with the creation of the landscape and with the weather, especially storms in winter are attached to her. The word, uh, the word Kalya simply means old woman in Irish and Scottish Gaelic, but it's come to be specifically applied to this mythological feature. The earliest recorded literature of the Kalya is found in ninth century Irish text, quote, uh, uh, known as the lament of the old woman of Bier. That's fucking I would love to read, like, see the original papers of that thing. Uh, just my history. Like, oh, that'd be so cool to see. This was written by an unknown author in the Yellow Book of Lacan. And this is the first tale that specifically names the Kalya as she is known today. In this story, the Kalya is a powerful and fearsome woman who is said to have created the mountains, lakes, and rivers of Ireland. She is also said to be the guardian of the seasons and is responsible for bringing winter to the land. The Kalya is often depicted as an old woman with long white hair and a bent back, uh, and a bent back, like she's got like a bent, like off back. She looks sure. old and decrepit. She is sometimes said to have one eye, and she is often associated with crows and other birds of prey. The Kalya is a complex, multifaceted figure, and her stories vary from region to region. However, she is always a powerful and important figure in Gaelic mythology, no matter where you're reading about her. And in um, some ways, is continued in cel- to be celebrated and honored today. Uh, some of the most common myths, she's said to have created the mountains of Scotland by throwing rocks at her enemies. She is said, <laughs> I love that. Uh, she is said to have the power to control the weather and is often blamed for storms and bad weather. She is said to be the guardian of the seasons as earlier, as I said earlier. She is said to have a magical cauldron that can grant people wishes. And she's said to have a pet crow that helps her to spy on people. Very Odin-esque. That's sick. All of this is sick to me. Yeah, they, uh, there are some places where they believe that Cal Yah was said to have lived and left her mark. Ben Nevis, which is the tallest mountain in the British Isles. The Cuilin Hills, or uh, on the Isle of Skye. The Pops of Jura, the uh, off the west coast of Scotland, the Kalia Stones on the Isle of Lewis, and the Kalia Well in count and County Kerry, Ireland. Um, so yeah, she's really kind of like heavy impact on this world, uh, on their culture rather. Um, what do yeah? What do you, where do your thoughts fall in terms of her? Ah, uh, and in, in the scale, like how do you how do you scale this one? Because she's so much more than like a lot of the other yeah, ones. Yeah, like this, this, this is a toughie. I, I think don't. I think it's like the the almost like the what I what I read this as is like how important like like the old women like the like the idea of old hardened people is especially old women and how important yeah. they are they've created literally like nature life itself like you know I don't know there's something kind of sure I like that kind of beautiful about that i think i think from that uh, you know you're, you're saying it's multifaceted i love that it's like a fearsome 
character as well as a tragic character. I don't know. I think this one is as complex as the Le- Lean In, uh, the, the Fairy Queen. I'm, I'm not going to yeah. even disrespect it by Lenan trying to pronounce Shee. it. Yeah, Lenan Shee. Like, this to me is just as interesting. And, you know, for every way that Lenan Shee is, is, is praised for beauty and, like, inspiration, this is like, the, the like, you know, the opposite. It's like stark reality. I don't know. I think it's nice. I think I like this. This is I'm a five. A, I'm with you. I'm a five on this. This is a five 100%. for me. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's there's a lot here. I think it could make a really great story. I, yeah, five, easy, okay. easy five. I, I, I'm glad. I think that'll be probably our winner across the board. So before we end, you know, let's not end on her. Let's end on something very small because it got a little bit of a video game connection that I really love, uh, and that's why I want to cover it. But there's Mario. not a lot. No, mm, yep, you got it. These are known as the Sluach. You like that? Sluach. Like, sluach. Yeah. Uh, Sounds like these Klingon. are a class of malevolent spirit in Irish and Scottish folklore, believed to be the restless souls of individuals barred from all of the afterlives, heaven, hell, and other world where the fairies live. Thus, these spirits would gather like a flock of birds and prey upon the living, always arriving from the West. Seen as a troubles as troublesome and destructive, the slough who would try and steal the dying souls of innocence to add to their mass. Thus, in days of old, windows facing west were often closed to try and prevent the spirits from coming in and abducting the souls of those that might be on their deathbed. Which is oh, kind of a weird, that's weird kind little of a, thing. Yeah, kind of um, uh, alien-esque. Thus, the sluach are made up of tormented souls of the innocent who have been dragged away by the restless dead to share in their eternal torment, a fate that would doubtlessly strike dread into the hearts of those who believed in such things in the superstitious past. Uh, these guys are not to be confused with the concept of, an, of the unseely court, though there's a lot of similarities between them and the wild hunt. They're not they're not the same. Um, and the video game uh, connection for them specifically is in the Legacy of Kane video game series. Oh, yeah. The, the Sluag are among the enemies that Raziel encounters in the spectral realm. I gotta They're go a back scavenging, and play animalistic games. creature that prey on souls and usually prefer to flee from Raziel. Little guys who steal souls. That's what they are. That's a good that's a good little PlayStation. That should be that should be back. Those things, those was, are good. Um, games. I went through the whole series a couple the of years ago. The top down one like, is really good. And then I never played the third one, but I liked the second one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Soul Reaver, Blood Omen 2, Soul Reaver 2. But uh, so I, I don't know. They're not they're not tragic. They're they're a one on my scale. They're just a but actually, no, in some ways they're the most tragic because they are just made up of innocent souls kidnapped by them. So I'm going to put it at a four. Yeah. I mean, look, it's not as, as it's not as open and shut as the hag. Or the Fairy yeah. Queen. It's not as like iconic as that, but I like it. So yeah, I think I'm in like maybe three and a half, four. I like it. Jesse, eh. rate us out of here. Eh. Really? I'm surprised. I eh. thought maybe because, you know, it's got some similarities to the Wild Hunt. It's in Legacy of Cain. You might like, no, I get, it. I get it. It's very like, again, we're not talking about like cool. We're talking about sad stories. No, you set the rules. Well, they, Alex set the rules. Hello. Uh, All right, but, well. That's the, 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 they're like all innocent souls. They're all innocent souls that got kidnapped. Right. Isn't but this isn't tragic? about the souls. This is about the creature. The creature is the souls, though. Yeah. The creature is the souls. The, right. But do the they files know? are in the computer? What? I don't know if do, they really know. Do they the, know, though? Are they aware of what they are? Good question. I don't have that, an answer. That's what you. I'm saying. Like, it's a different thing. You're it's right. It's like, uh, you know, floor, Mathis, though. you're playing. Baldur's Gate. Yeah. Are the Mind Flayers the person they were before, dude? You know, good question. I don't good know. That's why I'm asking. It is a, a good, good question. question. Yeah, it is a good question. I'll it's say true. three right down the middle just to be safe. Animorphs? Okay. Are Yerk hosts culpable? <laughs> good question. That's it for our cryptid episodes of <laughs> Ireland, everybody. <laughs> Ireland gets a five year? out of five. Legacy of Kane gets a five out of five. Animorphs <laughs> gets a five out of five. Uh, you guys get a five out of five. Listening, patreon.com slash pod gets five out of five. Uh, I'm going to give Jesse a five out of five. Aww, I'm going to give uh, Mathis a five out of five. I'm going to give Mathis good. cat five out of five. What cat is that? It's Who's that? It seems like this is worth less and less each Oliver. time you say it. Oliver gets five out of five. It's a big, it's just good vibes. It's good vibes to everybody today. Five, five out of five vibes. Five vibes. Come to our show. Thank you so much for listening. Come to to our our show show in LA. What is it? Shilmanatipod.com?
The link will be in the description below. It might be a Ticketmaster link this time around. Oh, so. big timing. Watch yeah, out. Get ready for those timing, hidden everybody. fees, baby. <laughs> oh, awesome. Uh, thank you guys so much for listening. We're off to do a mini soda at patreon.com slash Illuminati pod. We appreciate your support. We love you. Goodbye. Bye. Oh, and Alex Bye. Uh, or Jesse. It's a Jesse episode next week, everybody. <sighs> anyway, me and my wife were sitting outside indulging on our porch one night, enjoying ourselves. I needed to go to the bathroom, so I stepped back inside, and after a few moments, I hear my wife go, Holy shit, get out of here. So I quickly dash back outside, and she's looking up at the sky in awe. I look up too, and there's a perfect line of dozen lights traveling across the sky.